hello and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. My name is Susan and this channel is Road Reads. We're going to talk some books today. As you know, I, if you've watched my ch my channel before, I'm super psyched about Ancient Sathan and I have completed my first uh, work, which is a play by Euripides, and I've made it about halfway through another. So I want to give you an update on that. But then, like, I can't just read ancient classics. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. So I also just finished last night a um, contemporary fiction book that I really enjoyed. So I just want to share all of this with you. And then I also want to get your opinion um, about the channel uh, near the end of the video. But let's start with the good stuff. And the good stuff, I mean, I know you may say, really, Susan? But my answer is an enthusiastic yes. I read uh, Euripides Orestes yesterday, the day before, and it was so Good. I have not been this excited about a reading a Greek play since I read Medea last year. Uh, I think I've mentioned before Medea almost made it into my top 10 <laughs> books for last year. It is a play, but you get you take my point. Um, Orestes, maybe I even enjoyed more. It was so satisfying. The writing, I mean, again, I'm not a scholar. I've just done normal girl reading of Sophocles and Aeschylus and Euripides. Those may be the three main tragedians uh, I have read. Um, and by far, well, other than Medea, which is also Euripides, this just stands out beyond the others. Uh, his version of the story of Orestes was amazing. And I, you, as you know, I read the new release by Jennifer Saint a little while ago, Electra. So last month, I think I read it last month. And then when uh, when I finished Electra, I had two more plays in the Oresteia. Um, here it is. <laughs> I had two more plays in Aeschylus's The Oresteia, which... Um, So I had two more plays in Aeschylus's Oresteia to read, and uh, I finished those after reading Electra. And they, you know, they were good, but his writing is just not nearly as enjoyable and satisfying, in my opinion, uh, a layperson's opinion, as Euripides. The story of Orestes, obviously, if you're familiar, um, he's Electra's brother. He is Agamemnon and Clytemnestra's son. And uh, as you know, Clytemnestra kills Agamemnon when he comes back from the Trojan War. Uh, he's dead like in a hot second. And uh, Orestes goes into hiding for, for years, comes back, commits matricide. And now the Furies are after him. Uh, in this version, none of the gods are helping him. Um, his uncle Menelaus is not helping him. His grandfather is not helping him. Uh, who he has is he has Electra and he has his BFF Pallades. And, and so it's the three of them against everyone else, at least until the end of the book when one of the gods makes an appearance and totally changes what's going on. I did not know some of this myth. And and this is Euripides' version of the myth, right? There is no one definitive version of, of a myth. Um, but I found it so satisfying. I was surprised because, like I said, I hadn't heard um, a couple of the things that happened near the end of this. The writing, it's just so... It's so accessible. It's so passionate. Like you really get into the story much more so, at least in my experience, than I have with some of the other plays other than Medea. Um, but I, again, this might top Medea. So this was an excellent start to Ancient Sathan. And along those lines, I've been working my way through Ovid's Metamorphosis. And I knew I was going to enjoy this because this is this is like the encyclopedia of Greek and Roman mythology, right? Written by a Roman, Ovid. Um, so I knew I was going to enjoy it, but I am enjoying it much more than I even expected. I'm about halfway through. I'm at the beginning of book eight. 
most of these stories I know to some varying degree. Some of them I had no recollection of. <laughs> And I have been reading it like I'm gonna get tested. <laughs> so like I have been, mostly I've been reading it. Oh, I don't have it in here. Mostly I've been reading it on my Kindle. And then like I was going back into the book and highlighting what I highlighted on my Kindle, I was highlighting it in the book. And I'm like, I am never gonna get through Metamorphosis because this is, this is like a 600 plus page book. Um, so I haven't been, I'm, I'm not gonna continue with that depth of reading. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make my way through Metamorphosis and just enjoy it. And then as the year years <laughs> proceed, you know, journal the different stories. Um, it makes me wish I were an artist. I wish I could draw these stories. Um, but as you know, I will go online and I will, I will clip out art and put it in my book as I talk about the myth. Um, or as I write about the myth in my journal. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna pick up the pace with Metamorphosis and since I'm not getting tested on it, just enjoy it for this first reading because it is so enjoyable. I am gonna take a break from, from it for now and start the Aeneid probably today because this was a must. I must read this in June, 2022. It is the only um, restriction I have put on myself. So, I mean, this is nothing to, you know, and it is not something that's going to be a breeze uh, through either. This is a substantial epic poem, and I um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on Metamorphosis and start the Aeneid and um, just enjoy it. I'm not gonna let myself treat it like I'm gonna be tested on it. I just want to enjoy the epic story and the epic poem. Okay, so that's it for Ancient Sathan. Um, so. I heard about this book coming out several months ago, and it is This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub. And when I heard about the book, I thought, oh, that, that sounds interesting. But I knew it was about a father and daughter, and I didn't really want to read a book about a father and daughter um, at this point in time. So months have gone by, and of course I forgot what the description of it was. <laughs> Of course, I had it in my book wish list, and I thought, oh, I'll get, I'll get, because I wanted to read a contemporary fiction. You know, I kind of, other than like thrillers, I, I haven't been the best reader of contemporary fiction. So anyway, I downloaded it on my Kindle, and I devoured it in uh, two days. <laughs> this is a story that I feel like could go so wrong. But in my opinion, it did not. So it is about a father and daughter, but it also is about time. There is time travel in this book. It's also about the decisions that we make. It's also about what is the good life? How do we create that or can we? But at the heart of it, it is this beautiful relationship between a father who is dying and his 40 year old daughter. One, I loved that she was at least 40 years old, right? I mean, that is some of the problem with contemporary fiction for me is the young, young protagonist. Not that 40 doesn't sound young to me, <laughs> but I mean, I would take it again, but at least uh, she's in the same decade as me, uh, although I am nearing the next one in just uh, six months. I could relate <laughs> with a lot of the things she was going through and pondering. I was about two thirds through the book and I was just thinking, this is really working for me. I mean, it is such a change from, from you know, ancient Greek and Roman uh, authors, <laughs> but I needed that. I really did. And I think that made the book even better for me that I was reading it after reading things so different, writing so different from it. And so I'm about two thirds the way through and I'm like, stick the landing, stick the landing, Emma Straub. And I have not read any of her other books. This was my first Emma Straub book. And for me, she stuck the landing. Now, is this some great work of literature? No, but it is, I felt I really enjoyed the story. So I was a little torn on the um, the rating and I, I 
put it at three stars on on Goodreads last night. And in my head, I was like thinking, but this is like a three plus Susan. And I'm like, you know what? It's so three plusy, it's a four. So I changed it to a four on Goodreads. Another booktuber that I love to watch is Tanya and I'll link her channel below. And I know she reviewed this book, um, a very short review, and I uh, purposely did not watch it until after I filmed this because I know she gave it a three, uh, she told me so, but uh, I didn't want to hear her whys and wherefores till after I filmed. I didn't want to be swayed in any way. Not that I'm overly easily swayed, but uh, maybe. And so, yeah, for me, I just really enjoyed it. If you want a book that is I would call it overall a lighter read, but still delved to a certain degree into the big questions about life. And if you're okay with time travel, cause that happens, I recommend it. I really do. I enjoyed it, but it was just a fun read for me that also had enough, enough depth to it to make it really worthwhile. So that's what I've been reading. Okay, so I don't know if you ever look at Road Reads subscriber account, but I am so close to 1000. I mean, I did start this channel like 200 years ago, but um, you know, that's just uh, slow and steady uh, is the story of my life somewhat. So I'm so close to 1000 and I would love to get your opinion on what type of videos do you like watching on booktube i would be completely open if you have suggestions of things you like to see that that you'd like to see from my channel so if you have any thoughts in that regard please 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 leave me a comment below i would completely appreciate it and i appreciate all, all of you who uh, check in with me, if it's every week or every so often, if this is your first time, I really do so much appreciate anyone who watches the channel. I just think it's awesome. I have really enjoyed talking about books with you. So anyway, that is it for today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.